I like them bigger. I really do. Which is why we're going to clock a new aircraft type within Air New Zealand today. After spending the whole of yesterday on turboprops, join me on my mission to wrap my hands around the girth of the Airbus A320. Step one, wake up early, gonna rise with the sun. Step two, get some good, some food in you. Step three, you grow hard about what you wanna be. Step four, fuck everybody, just do your thing. Wake up, today's gonna be a good day. 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 And good morning guys, I'm coming to you from the southernmost airport in New Zealand and this is Invercargill Airport. So um, if you were to fly non-stop from here to Auckland, this would be the longest non-stop domestic flight you can get in New Zealand. But today is a Saturday and the non-stop flight is not operating so I'm getting on board um, a flight back to Auckland via Christchurch. So come along with me to see what domestic flying in New Zealand is like. Let's do this. That's right, between Auckland and Invercargill is really the furthest you can fly within domestic New Zealand. The outbound flight from Auckland is just over 2 hours on an A320, which is a really long flight by Kiwi standards. Welcome to Invercargill Airport, which is the 11th busiest in New Zealand. Although it is presently a domestic airport, there is an international capability of a secure terminal as and when the need arises. Air New Zealand flies from here to Wellington, Christchurch and Auckland. Stewart Island flights flies from here to an airstrip on that island just beyond the coastline of Inver. So I suppose that would be the southernmost aerodrome in New Zealand? If you're new to my channel, my name's Ryan. Born and bred in Singapore, I now call Australia home. I travel lots to film and eat, which explains why I can never sit still and my mouth is always full. This flight from Inver today is just a small part of a wider travel series which began almost two weeks ago in my home airport of Adelaide. I flew to Melbourne, where I had such an eventful time stuffing my face. Australia's newest low-cost airline beckoned and they took me to Sunshine Coast. I found myself in Gympie, where I took a train to Brisbane. The world's most beautiful business class cabin brought me from there to Auckland. I then experienced New Zealand's newest train service to Hamilton and that was when the day of delays saw me in Wellington before arriving in Inver last night. Tomorrow in Auckland, my flight gets cancelled and that excruciating event was covered in two videos early in the series. I finally get on board Qantas for one last flight to take me back to where I came from. If you love exhausting itineraries like this, previous videos are in the description and keep a lookout for future videos lined up in this series. Even better, hit subscribe and the bell icon so you'll get notified whenever the next episode goes to air. So here's the thanks and your support is very much appreciated. Check-in was all self-help and the only time you actually dealt with a human being was at luggage drop-off. Perhaps my age makes me miss the act of walking up to a physical check-in desk and have a chat with the agent about our day. With that done, a quick walk to appreciate how well New Zealand does small airports. So far, the ones that I've been to are all very beautiful. And Invercargill is no different. On this trip of mine, I think Wellington takes the cake. That airport terminal is absolutely stunning. I've been told locals actually dislike that airport because it's a long walk to wherever they need to go. Is this true? Leave a comment below. That's the 9am departure for Stewart Island flights. That airline keeps the sparsely populated Stewart Island connected to South Island and they fly between Invercargill and Ryan's Creek Aerodrome three times a day using a Britain Norman Islander aircraft. From Ryan's Creek, it's a short drive to Oban, the island's principal settlement. That's my aircraft pulling in from Christchurch. So far, so good. We're still on time, especially after yesterday's drama. I'm just glad there's no delay. For now, I think. And I might have spoken too soon. Here we go. 
sauntering into the cold October morning with wind chills chilly enough to snap your nipples off. Taking us on flight NZ5702 between Invercargill and Christchurch is Mike Victor Papa, the very same aircraft which flew me from Hamilton to Wellington yesterday. It's a six and a half year old ATR72600 which first flew with Mount Cook Airlines before going to Air New Zealand. A very friendly perky welcome on board was a given. And I was soon standing amongst familiar surroundings. Looks like the flight attendants weren't the only perky ones. My noggin was also very perky. So perky it felt the need to say hello to the overhead compartment. Air New Zealand was mostly government owned for most of its life. And it was privatised for a brief moment in the 90s. That was when they went Godzilla and bought into Ansett Australia, a far bigger airline in an attempt to get their foothold into the Aussie market. As the financial troubles in Ansett started to mount, Air New Zealand found itself collapsing under the burden of their investment, biting off way more than they could chew. I suppose deep-throating an overly bloated airline like Ansett was the final straw and Air New Zealand finally gagged and said enough is enough. ANSET's need for capital was far greater than Air New Zealand's ability to provide it. So in September 2001, the cord between ANSET and Air New Zealand was cut. ANSET went into administration and after several failed attempts to revive the airline, it disappeared permanently from the Australian skies, marking an end to one of Australia's great airlines. Air New Zealand, on the other hand, was renationalized as the government injected millions of dollars in a rescue package to save the airline. The government's stake in the airline has since been reduced to 53% where it remains today. Takeoff into the crispy, beautiful morning was from runway 22. We would turn right after coasting out, and that would take us in the opposite direction, cruising with the Southern Alps to our port side. We would remain in that flight path until arrival into Christchurch International Airport after a flight time of 1 hour 11 minutes, covering a distance of roughly 470 kilometers or 290 miles. As we coasted back into South Island, the cloud cover started to obscure everything beneath us. So the journey going forward from here, there would be none of that stunning view outside my window. So much for carefully selecting my seat in anticipation of great video footage. Perhaps this is a great reason to return. What's the best season to be flying in New Zealand in order to get clear skies to enjoy the view? Let me know in the comments. Since there was nothing out of my window to gawk at, my seat neighbour and I ended up chatting the entire flight about everything under the sun. There was only so many cookie time cookies I could eat, so thank god I had a full breakfast at a hotel before the airport. Because otherwise it would have been another day of getting starved by Air New Zealand again. Such a pity. I kept looking out longingly into this imagining the snow-capped mountain ranges beneath it. Why of all days to be storming you chose today? I suppose there's a reason why New Zealand is also known as Aotearoa, the land of the long white cloud. In no time, we punched through the clouds beneath us and we were soon on a final approach for Christchurch International Airport. This airport we're landing into is New Zealand's second busiest and also the country's first international airport. Christchurch is the largest city in South Island, home to some 396,000 residents. Between 2010 and 2011, 
Christchurch was struck by a series of large earthquakes, with the final major quake happening in June 2011. In between these major quakes, small aftershocks were felt and continued to be registered way into 2012. Today, much of central Christchurch has been reconstructed because of those tragic events. So that was uh, flight number one done from Invercargill to Christchurch. So now I'm off to flight number two. Um, so to stay in Christchurch is going to be short. I think my transit is only about one hour. So now let's go look for the next flight. Because of yesterday's bomb scare at Queenstown Airport leading to a nationwide flight delays and cancellations, I had a strong feeling that this would spill over to today's operations as well. So when it came close to 12.30pm and I noticed the aircraft wasn't at the gate, I casually asked one of the agents if the flight was delayed because nothing was announced nor was it reflected on the display screens. She looked at me with eyes devoid of any soul and just said, yes. She must have been still tired from dealing with yesterday's carnage. This reminds me of the time when I was flying between Hanoi and Ho Chi Minh City on Pacific Airlines and I asked the flight attendant if she knew how long the flight was going to be. She said, yes, and walked away. Continuing delays from yesterday. The aircraft is not even here yet. There was a bomb scare in Queenstown yesterday, so leading to a lot of delays. So I am not sure if that has affected what is going on today. We're supposed to leave at 1 p.m., but uh, yeah, the aircraft is not there yet. What time is it now? It is 12.40. Yeah. Slightly before 1 p.m., our scheduled departure time, the aircraft finally arrived from Auckland. Air New Zealand presently operates 17 of these 320s with current engine option. Besides doing domestic runs, they also replaced the 767s and 737s on some short international routes to Australia and the Pacific Islands. Boarding finally commenced without any apology for the delay. But still, it's always good to finally get going. They did ask for status flyers to come forward, and that's about the only priority you'd get in New Zealand, since there isn't any business class service at all. I did not see anyone policing this priority call, so I just walked forward to board. Similar to Australian domestic flights, the second half of the aircraft boards by rear stairs, and that's my favourite way to do it. Our aircraft of choice for NZ546 from Christchurch to Auckland this afternoon was Oscar X-Ray Kilo, an Airbus A320-200 which was delivered brand new to Air New Zealand in September 2015, making her just under 8.5 years old at the time of writing. There's no better greeting in New Zealand than a Kia ora welcome on board. The flight attendant even quickly glanced on my boarding pass and mouthed off my name. Very impressive! This A320 is configured for domestic flights, so it has a capacity for 171 economy seats in a standard 3x3. When Air New Zealand emerged from their traumatic breakup with ANSET Australia in 2001, the airline was in a pretty bad shape. So the government being the new old, old, new owners once again, set about placing the airline back into the basket of profitability. Air New Zealand was reconfigured into a pseudo low-cost airline, pretty much like what we see today. Business class was removed from domestic flights, and there's no more food served. On international flights, warm food is purely on a buy-on-board basis unless you've purchased the most expensive tier in economy class. Business class and premium economy is now only found on white body aircraft like the 777 and the Dreamliners. As the heavens opened up above us, pushback finally began some 40 minutes behind schedule. 
Suppose after yesterday's horrid day of flying, apologies for a delay was no longer on the script. It was just assumed that flights would come and go just that little bit later. The weather today wasn't helping as well. What an absolutely wet takeoff that was. Up and away we went, departing from runway 20. That trajectory set us for a northeasterly flight path towards Auckland International Airport. On approach at destination, it was pretty much straight in, lining up for runway 05 right, completing this journey in 1 hour 10 minutes, clocking a distance of roughly 745 kilometers or 463 miles. Is it just me? Or is that some of the most chill in-flight announcements ever made? I felt so relaxed as if I was being serenaded underneath a palm tree by the beach. There is little to no entertainment on these domestic A320s. Although on the flip down screen, you can participate in a bit of trivia. And the first question asked was actually what was on my Australian citizenship test? What's the official floral emblem of Australia since 1988? And the answer is, drum roll, dum -dum -dum -dish, the golden wattle. Flight attendants started their meal cart run from the rear. There was also another cart starting from the front. On this one hour flight, there was only so much time we had to hand out those cookie time cookies, corn chips and beetroot crackers. I have had more than my fair share of cookie time, and I reckon if I were to stuff one more cookie time cookie into me, you'd definitely see me reaching for the sick bag. So to mix things up a little, it was time for some corn chips. And yes, I have not had lunch, so you can bet your bottom dollar I was so hungry I almost ate the plastic wrapping as well. NZ546 from Christchurch to Auckland is now drawing to a close. So this is also a great opportunity for me to wrap up my thoughts about flying Air New Zealand, the airline that provides the world's warmest welcome. Keen observers of my videos would have picked up how unlucky I was on this trip in New Zealand. The planets must have missed the line and I caught this country on the wrong day. Well, wrong days. The bomb scare in Queenstown yesterday threw every possible flight dispatch out of whack and I watched everything unfold in a horrific slow motion as I sat helpless at Wellington Airport. Giant rolling delays leading to cancelled flights and distressed stranded travellers. It wasn't pleasant at all. And the delays today went unaccounted for. There was no explanation why, 
so we just took one up the chin and rolled with the punches. After yesterday's drama, today's 40 minute delay seemed like child's play. And of course, the flight cancellation tomorrow saw me stranded in Auckland for one extra night. Make sure you catch up on that video if you haven't already. Air New Zealand is the country's official flag carrier and the only full-service airline flying domestic. Our understanding of full-service needs a little adjustment here. As you saw in my video last week, flying tip-to-tip -tip can sometimes be a long-drawn journey stretching the entire day, especially if flights don't connect and you're faced with a long transit. There is no food on Air New Zealand flights, so if you come unprepared like me, you have to lay the groundwork of spending your entire salary eating at very expensive airport cafes or endure your flights going hungry. I just wish there was buy on board food items, but we did not even have that option. I suppose the airline needs to do what it needs to to remain profitable, and if they found this balance, power to them. On this trip, I've gone through the entire domestic fleet of Air New Zealand, Dash 8s, ATRs and the Airbus A320. I just wish I got the opportunity to take in the splendour of the country's scenery from up there. But unfortunately, luck wasn't on my side. I guess after making my butt numb flying props for the last few flights, it was a welcome relief getting aboard this A320 this afternoon for my final domestic flight. So in conclusion, I do like my jets bigger. Truly, madly, deeply do. Kia ora guys and welcome back to Auckland and I'm here at the Auckland domestic terminal at the airport so that was all my flights in New Zealand completed uh, I mean the flight was delayed and all but you know uh, yeah perhaps I was just unlucky on this trip in New Zealand because most of my flights were delayed so is this the norm um, what is your experience flying domestic in New Zealand? Do you experience a lot of delays like this? Let me know in the comments. So in the meantime, I've chucked details of my Instagram on your screen right now. So hit me up there, chuck me a follow, so you can see where am I traveling to in real time. So don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the bell notification icon, so you'll know every time when I come to another country to fly the domestic carriers again. In the meantime, take care all of you, and I will see you for my next video. Bye.